All right, question two. Ethene, which has a molar mass of 28.1, may be prepared by the dehydration of ethanol, and it gives it the molar mass, using a solid catalyst. A setup for the lab synthesis is shown in the diagram above. The equation for the dehydration reaction is given below. All right. A student added 0 0.200 gram sample of your ethanol to a test tube using the setup shown above. The student heated the test tube gently with a Bunsen burner until all of the ethanol evaporated and gas generated stopped. When the reaction stopped, the volume of the gas collected was 0 0.0854 liters at 0 0.822 atmospheres and 305 Kelvin. It tells you the vapor pressure of the water is 35.7 torr. So keep in mind, just like what we did in the lab, this is a collecting gas over water question. So remember, you're going to notice where it shows ethane right there. It's not only the pressure of ethane that's in there, but also you have um, vapor pressure from water. So we have to take that into account. Calculate the number of moles of C2H4, okay, I, that are actually produced in the experiment and measured in the gas collection tube. So the first thing that we have to do is keep in mind that the pressure of ethene there is going to be equal to the total pressure, which we have, minus the pressure of water. Because remember, in that tube, it's not just ethene, or else that would be the pressure of ethene equals the total pressure, the total atmospheric pressure. Instead, since the pressure of ethene and the pressure of water equals the total pressure, I need to make sure to subtract. So they show that here. Make sure that you're converting from tor into atmospheres, because the two pressures they give you are in different units. And then they take the total pressure, 0 0.822 atmospheres, and they subtract from that the pressure of uh, the water pressure, right? The vapor pressure. And so now they've got the pressure, and now you can just use PV equals NRT. You know the pressure, you know the volume, you know your R, and you know your temperature. Now you can just solve for moles. So you got one point for finding the pressure of just the ethene, right, by subtracting, and then one point for the moles of ethene. Okay? In II, it says that would be produced if the dehydration reaction went to completion, meaning everything, all of the ethanol reacted, okay? So now we're ignoring the collecting gas over water and saying, all right, if all of the ethanol reacted, how many moles of C2H4 should have been produced? Well, I know the mass of ethanol I started with. It was 0 0.200 grams. And using stoichiometry, I can simply figure out how many moles of C2H4 should have been produced, right? So I can go from grams of ethanol into moles of ethanol and then into moles of ethene because there's a one-to-one -one relationship. So there's my number of moles right there. You only got one point for the correct number of moles, right? Because that's pretty simple. In B, it says calculate the percent yield of ethene in the experiment. In I, notice it says that are actually produced, right? So that's what they actually got in the lab. So that's what's going to go on top. And then the theoretical is II, right? If all of it had actually reacted, which is unlikely, that is how much would be produced. So I'm going to take the 0 0.00264, which I got in I, divide it by 0 0.00434, which I got in II, multiply by 100, and I got my percent yield. Okay? In the next part, it says, because the dehydration reaction is not observed to occur at 298, the student claims that the reaction has an equilibrium constant less than one. Do the, ther do the thermodynamic data for the reaction support the student's claim. Justify your answer, including a calculation of delta G of Gibbs free energy for the reaction. So based on the information that's given to me above, I know that my change in entropy is 126 and my change in enthalpy is 45.5. Now notice for enthalpy, it's in kilojoules. For entropy, it's in joules. So make sure you convert one, one of them into joules, both of them into joules, or both of them into kilojoules. But here's the actual work. You're going to be using your Gibbs free energy formula, right? For this, they converted from joules into kilojoules for entropy, which I agree with, all right? And what they end up getting is 8.0 kilojoules per mole. Now, since your delta G is greater than zero, what that means is that your reaction 
is not favorable. It does not proceed spontaneously. And therefore, your k would be less than 1. So that is absolutely correct. So you got 1 point for the correct calculation of delta g, and you got 1 point for your justification. Now it says... The Lewis electron diagram for C2H4 is shown below in the box on the left. In the box on the right, complete the Lewis electron diagram for C2H5OH by drawing in all the electron pairs. All right? So this was given to you. Now I know for C2H5OH, I'm going to have two carbons bound to each other with five hydrogens, right? Three on, and I'll just show it to you, three on one of the carbons, two on the other. And then because it says C2H5OH, I know that that OH is going to be hanging off the side, okay? There isn't really anything unique about this, just the fact that the oxygen has two lone pairs of electrons, no need for double bonding or anything like that, so this is pretty easy, right? You, and it notes for the scoring guideline, it says, diagram should include all bonding pairs plus two non-bonding on oxygen, right? So easy points for you guys. E, it says, what is the approximate value of the COH bond? Notice you have four electron domains there. So it, it's going to be, even though, right, the actual shape isn't tetrahedral, the bond angle is gonna be a little bit less than 109.5. So the bond angle is approximately 109, works perfectly, okay? So in this question, it says, during the dehydration experiment, C2H4 and unreacted C2H5OH passed through the tube into the water. The C2H4 was quantitatively collected as a gas, but the unreacted C2H5OH was not. Explain this in terms of intermolecular forces between water and each of the gases. Well, since C2H4 is nonpolar, its London dispersion forces, the attraction between its London dispersion forces and water is going to be extremely weak, causing it to be only slightly soluble, if soluble at all. However, C2H5OH, since it has hydrogen bonding and so does water, there's going to be a stronger attraction between the molecules. And as a result, C2H5OH is going to be more soluble in water. So you got one point, point for comparing the solubility of ethene versus that of ethanol. And then you also got one point for talking about their intermolecular forces. So talking about for ethene, how it has that induced dipole, right, LDF, and then talking about ethanol and hydrogen bonds.